What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have a new area of interest in the Atlantic Ocean in the main development region. We now have Tropical Storm Dawn that is reinvigorated and now is a 50 mile per hour tropical storm. We're going to go ahead and quickly go all over it. Real quickly, we're going to go ahead and start with Dawn real quickly and go over the public advisory as well as the cone very quickly at 3 p.m. Uh, Greenwich uh, military time. I'm not sure what GMT means. I know it's Greenwich something time. I apologize for that. But Dawn is moving uh, towards the west-northwest near 8 miles per hour. Maximum stained winds are at 50 miles per hour with higher gusts. Slight strengthening is possible during the next day or so, followed by little change in strength through Saturday. So this could potentially get up to a 60-mile-per-hour tropical storm. Tropical storm force winds extend out 70 miles from the center. Pressure is 1,002. Here's the cone. It is expected to continue moving west-northwest and then start making a turn towards the northwest. It's not impacting land or anything like that, so if you're in Newfoundland, you don't have to worry about that. This isn't Hurricane Larry from 2021. Now, what we should be looking at right here is this area of interest right here that we have pulled up for you guys. We're going to go ahead and show you that. We have the latest for, uh, for you guys Right here, a tropical lit wave located a few hundred miles southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands is currently interacting with the intertropical convergence zone. The combination of these features is producing an elongated area of showers and thunderstorms over the eastern and central tropical Atlantic, while dry air in, in, from the north will present significant organization during the next day or two. Conditions are expected to be more conducive for some development later this weekend as the system moves westward across the central tropical Atlantic. 20% chance in the next seven days. Now, I've been paying very close attention to this. We've been reporting consistently on Pat's Path Predictor that the European and GFS were calling for some development of this going on right here. So this is something we need to continue to watch, especially as the shear is starting to decrease considerably across the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico, especially as we start seeing these sea temperatures. This is July 20th right now. We're now starting to see sea temperatures of 30 plus degrees Celsius in the main development region over here, which that is unheard of right here. Like These waters are so warm. They're so above average. We're already cracking 86 degrees Fahrenheit in some areas of the MDR, especially in the western part off of French Guinea over here. Now, we're going to go ahead and zoom in real quickly. You have this area. The whole area is at over 82 degrees Fahrenheit, so more than enough for fuel for systems to develop if all the other conditions are apply as well. Now, I want to go ahead and pay attention more to the Gulf of Mexico because this is what's been going on over the last week. We're now seeing a very large area of 31 degrees Celsius or 88 degrees Fahrenheit waters from Florida all the way to the parts of the Loop Current and from Louisiana all the way to the Central Gulf right here. Those things are likely going to connect in the next few weeks or so. So if we see a massive area of 31 degrees Celsius over here, especially with the OHC that we're looking at, the ocean heat content that we're looking at, which is basically the energy of the water that, ha that has with this, it's absolutely ridiculous. A lot of that 31, 30 degrees Celsius or 86 to 88 degree Fahrenheit areas, over 150 OHC so far, 175 blob a little bit into the central Gulf right here. We're seeing a lot of these areas right here popping up. We're seeing a 175 plus area off the coast of Cuba, another one in the Caribbean, another small one a few hundred, a couple hundred miles south of Cuba, and another one off the coast of Jamaica over here. So this is something I am taking very seriously right here, and something I will continue to take seriously, especially considering where we were in 2020, where this stays about the sa about the same in the Western Caribbean right here, but everything else is just absolutely outperforming what we were looking at three years ago when we. Had and hyperactive hurricane season. And speaking of that, the Weather Channel recently updated their uh, their projection. They're calling for 20 named storms, nine hurricanes, and five major hurricanes, which I wanted to go ahead and share that with you as I'm looking at this stuff right here because that's showing that a lot of these estimates are continuing to ramp it, ramp up, and a lot of these estimates are continuing to call for a hurric uh, active hurricane season. At this point, it doesn't really matter what El Nino is going to do because we have so much warm water, we have so much ocean heat content, and the shear is right on schedule unlike last year because the shear did not collapse last year till mid to late August or so. 
But right now, the shear's on schedule. The Gulf of Mexico is completely clear. Western Caribbean's a bit clear. And even parts of the Eastern Caribbean, the shear is starting to weaken a bit, and it will continue to. The main development region, is, other than areas to the in the northern half, are is primed for development. So we have to pay attention to this very seriously. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show you the shear that we're looking at going forward, because basically what we've been seeing over the last two months or so is this blob of Carib of shear in the Caribbean just continuing to hold. Well, that was this was 72 hours ago. This is where we're at. The shear is already starting to f fade and collapse across the eastern Caribbean, and it's going to fluctuate over the next few days or so, but ultimately it is going to be on a downward trend all the way until August. You can see that right here. Now, before we get into what the shear is looking like, this is what this the European f official forecast has. It's having this low pressure system, which is our area of interest right there. And I'm paying attention to this area because as this approaches the Lesser Antilles, the shear in the Caribbean, especially uh, east of Puerto Rico, it's like it just collapses right there. It still remains intact there, but that is pu getting pushed further to the north by a ridge that is developing right there. So. If this thing can take advantage of all the in ingredients it's given, because there is some dry air right now in the MDR. We'll go ahead and show you that right here. There is some dry air just right there. So it's that's pretty much what's limiting its development right there. The shear and waters are good. It just needs to fight off that dry air that's to the north of it. But once it does that over the next couple of days, it'll have no problem developing if it does do that. Although the Sahara dust is being a bit stubborn, so it may potentially inhibit, uh, limit some development right there. But there, it does find a nice moist pocket, which if it can exploit as well as the very warm waters and weaker, weaker wind shear that's over there. If we go ahead and take a look at the wind shear, there's not too much there right there. So that's definitely some good, ter good territory for that to develop and grow right there. But... All straight and uh, forward right here. This Caribbean uh, part right here that's been holding for the last couple of months is collapsing. And basically, if we go ahead and according to the European by 10 days out, a lot of it's cleared out and push is pushed further to the north over here. So definitely something we need to pay attention to. Now we're going to go ahead and show you some ensemble runs. The European is still calling for this thing to be very strong. The GFS has backed off on it quite a bit. But considering that the European is quite a, much more accurate than the GFS from what I've seen, I'm taking the European more seriously, especially considering we now have an area of interest on this. So... The European Ensemble runs, basically at this point, this is about six days out, it approaches the Lesser Antilles as either a tropical, as tropical storm, some cases have it as a strong tropical storm, and then it develops further into a hurricane in the Eastern Caribbean, which, thanks to the lower wind shear values that are over there, is definitely possible for that to happen. A lot of these have it hitting the Dominican Republic through Haiti into Cuba, some have it through the Central America, and then... A couple of them actually have it entering the Gulf of Mexico and potentially impacting the United States. The Europeans also looking at the tropical wave after this one and is potentially looking at some development with that. This once again approaching the Lesser Antilles and taking this path that's mainly going to stay in the Atlantic, uh, Atlantic, although the Bahamas and parts of the Dominican Republic could definitely get affected according to these runs right here. So this is something we need to continue to pay attention to. We're going to go ahead and show you the GFS ensembles just for some comparison to see what we're looking at right here. The Zero Z has really not that many scenarios. It does have a couple of tropical storm scenarios, but the dry air is much more uh, robust in the GFS model than the European model. So that's primarily the reason why it's not acting the way it normally would. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and close the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. I am back in my studio. I am home from Dallas. That's where I was last week. So yeah, I'm back in the studio. You see the studio back me behind me. So yeah, we're having a good time here. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.